How you doing? My name is John Sikoris, and this is Sri Sikoris, and we're the owners of Titan Medical Center. Okay, what's going on? All right, welcome to Talking Fucking Smack, where we talk bullshit here. All right, make sure you watch this video all the way to the end, because in the end, I have a message for you, okay? We're going to start off with a thing first about steroids and the Schwarzenegger and everything. Then we're going to get into this, another rant, which I think is pretty much important. And in the end, there's a message. But watch in the end, the very end of this video, I try to give you a message, okay? Because to me, that message is important. Listen, guys. Uh, got the clipboard. I got to read my handwriting, so give me a second. You know, I fucking read like a, you guys probably fucking think like this guy reads like a third grader or less. But... I do, and it's because I can't read my own handwriting, and because I'm half fucking blind. Uh, okay, uh, Dan the Iceman, who's one of you guys here, just asked me to give a quick shout out to. Uh, he wants to say Happy Nurses Day. So we gotta we gotta respect our nurses because let me tell you something. Joe Pietaro's wife is a nurse. And uh, he'll be the first to tell you, nurses work hard, and without nurses, we'd be all fucked, okay? Because half the doctors don't know shit, and the nurses are the right hand. So, happy Nurses Day to the Iceman's fiance, Jill, okay? So, Jill, what's up, Jill? All right, give my Iceman a, you know, a fist bump for me, all right? And all the nurses at Cape Regional at Cape Regional, that's what he wrote. So I guess it's Cape Regional Hospital or Cape Regional whatever. But all the nurses at Cape Regional, happy Nurses Day. And thanks for doing what you do for us, all right? He give them Momo doctors a little biff in the head. Um, anyway, so that's what, uh, that's what we're going to start off with. So we're going to do Jill, happy Nurses Day. You and your crew of nurses over there at Cape Regional. There you go. You know, Dan, you could have been a little bit more specific. You could have said my fiance Jill, whatever her name is. You could have said Cape Regional in whatever state it is. But I guess they know what I'm talking about. All right? Jill, if you're watching this, you and your nurses, all right, thank you again. And Dan's a Momo. That's what Momos do. They forget to tell you the, the full name. They forget to tell you to wear. Just Cape Regional. All right, Dan. You're a freaking Momo. All right. And speaking of Momos... We're gonna we're gonna get into a little bit of stuff today. Uh, you know where the hell's my? Oh, I have to wait till I turn this off. I guess I forgot the magazine. But anyway, Titan Medical right there. I'm gonna try to talk to them see if they can send me some samples of shit. No, not juice shit. You know you already know you can get juice, okay? But I know that they sell a lot of the shit that's not just steroids. So I gotta find out. You know, like a Fedra, I call it a Fedri, make it kind of cute, you know. A Fedri, a little Fedri, all right. Um, you know, uh, oh, by the way, somebody was just asking me, you know, like the difference, like I, one of the guys was saying about a Fedrin and getting a, like, a, like, you know, you can get like Bronchade from CVS or any pharmacy or, you know, even even uh, uh, Walmart. It's a lot cheaper if you go to Walmart and get that stuff, okay? You can get Bronchade or you can get uh, Primatine is the one that I take because Bronchade is sulf, uh, is ephedrine sulfate. I told you this last fucking video, but somebody, you few you guys keep saying, hey, listen, you want ephedrine, you can get it here. It's not the same, all right? Even the Primatine, which is ephedrine 
ACL, which is the one we really want, is diluted. Okay? They put the Guelphicin or Galphicin or Gelfedrin or whatever the fuck, however you pronounce that shit. They stick that shit in there. Alright? Because some guys were make taking them, buying that shit up. Alright? That's why I gotta show you license. Because some guys were buying that shit up. I don't know how they do it, but they break down the chemical, they take the ephedrine out of there, and they were making like fucking crystal meth or ice or crack or fucking whatever fuck it is that they make. So they fucked it up for all of us. Alright? So. I'm talking about getting real ephedrine without that guelphedrine, whatever the fuck it is. Guelphedrine or guelphacin or whatever the fuck that shit is, okay? Without that in it. But if, even so, I take the primatine ephedrine because that's HCL. The, the bronchate, which everybody's like, bronchate, it's got 25 milligrams and stronger. Primatine is 12.5. Is, uh, yes, primatine, but you get more pills because two of them together is 25. And their ephedrine HCL. I don't give a shit. It doesn't match. It's not the same as ephedrine. Uh, uh, ephedrine, excuse me, the way I'm saying it. Uh, sulfate. Okay? So there you go. So you guys that keep fucking texting me and thinking like you're, you know, messaging me. They think you're like giving me these like, you know, oh, dude, you can get ephedrine. Dude, you can get it. They have it at fucking CVS. I get it, guys. Guys, I already buy it. I get it at fucking Walmart. All right? It's cheaper. But I want to see what the fuck Titan Medical is going to fucking throw down at me. You know what I mean? Because, you know, not for nothing. I'm their guy here. You know, nothing, not a key here. You know, not a key. Not a key. As my mother always say, not a key. Means nothing here in Spanish, I think. I don't know. Could mean asshole, but that's what they tell me. All right. Gabish. Should we get busy? Let's, 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 let's get busy. I got some good shit I guess we'll talk about today. All right. So let's stop fucking around. All right, listen. Got to show you the magazine. It's your boy right here, right here. Okay. You want to read some crazy shit? You want to read some crazy articles? You want to sit on a fucking toilet with some good shit to read? Right there. All right. You got my columns, just like Ramblin' Freaks, Cool Talk and Smack, <laughs> like the show. Oh wait a minute, no, is it Cool Talk and Smack? Hold on. Yeah, it's Cool Talk and Smack. Holy shit, what the fuck's wrong with me, bro? I got, I still get this goddamn fucking... I'm, I'm looking at my thing here. Yeah, talk is smack. What the fuck, bro? Holy shit. Now I'm getting Alzheimer's. I still got the goddamn uh, cold, you know? From, you know, the New York cold. Everybody gets it. You can't get rid of it. Just when it starts to go away, it comes back. The gift that keeps on giving. Like my herpes. Yeah, I do have herpes. I've had it since it was like 18. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Fuck around with pigs, that's what happens. Clipboard. Okay. I'm over here sniffling. So now I don't snort coke and I don't snort pre-workout. <coughs> there you go. Say a little cough. All right. I need my ephedri. Um, Iron Man. Okay. Let me let me try to read this bullshit here. Okay. Iron Man. That's the guy's name. He wants to know. Uh, I try to not shell a lot of this shit. Um. I get from reading all the magazine articles from the er from that era. He means the Schwarzenegger. Era. Sorry, I didn't write that down. From the Schwarzenegger, era, he was saying that um, he never hears any about anybody suffering side effects back in the seventies. And you know, in Arnold's area, all the guys from the movie Pumping Iron. Uh, Arnold says he didn't really know what steroids were back then. <laughs> uh, and so, the information, I mean, Arnold was fucking, uh, you know, we'll get into that. Um, the mis in information was harder to find than it is today. Uh, you know, he's talking about, the, and then he says, go, he goes on to this list of problems about guys who abuse shit today. And he's saying about depression, anxiety, libido, loss, uh, heart problems, etc. He forgot to throw kidney problems in there, because the fucking they all got kidney problems, all right? Uh... Let me see here. Uh, sorry, my I'm, I'm built upside down. My nose runs and my feet smell. You get it? Your, your nose runs and your feet smell? It's a joke. Got a cold. Come on, get with it. Uh, anyway. So these same side effects must surely have been back around in the 70s, as he says. Uh... 
or was it that the doses, the, the dosages were safer? Uh, they avoided, you know, and that's how they avoided any side effects. I'm interested to hear your views on this. As far as many anabolic users today seem to be fucked up mentally and emotionally. Hey, and uh, from all drug use, uh, at least compared to the others from the golden era. Holy fuck, man. That took me, like, I'm looking at the thing here, but like three minutes to fucking say. All right, anyway, listen. Okay. Okay, listen to me. First of all, when Arnold says he didn't know what steroids were, that's a joke. Of course he knew what steroids were, all right? I didn't know what steroids were because I was and just a kid reading the magazines and didn't talk about it. But he was already a pro bodybuilder back in the day. And when he first trained at a gym, he trained at gyms where pros were back in Europe. And they were giving that shit out, okay? Now, he, I, I think what he meant, I think what Arnold might have meant, was that they didn't realize back then... How, what they were really taking. I mean, I think they knew, you know, they were steroids, but I don't think that they knew to what effect, okay? I don't think that they knew, like, uh, like what the effects were. I think they just knew, like, oh, these things build muscle, you know? I mean, that's what I think, okay? All right? Don't mind me, again, I don't snort coke or any of that fucking shit, but, you know, I got a fucking, the, that goddamn fucking, my daughter's just getting over pneumonia, and she's still fighting him, fighting, doing the fighting shit. She does, she does the, the jujitsu and all that shit. Um, me, I'm a fucking momo. But anyway, so, uh, you know, I don't think that they knew, the like, what the effects were going to be on steroids. But, but, who wrote this thing in? Iron Man. Iron Man, he, let's get into this a little bit, because I don't think that you fucking guys out there know... They're back in Arnold's day, the Danny Padilla, or uh, you know, all the guys. Okay, you know, used to talk about this a lot. And even Arnold, if you saw him in the movie Pump and Iron, remember when it was like 101 days to go or whatever it was, you know, to the Olympia, and he walked in the gym and he was all skinny and shit, and he said, "I like the little, little, little bit of muscle," right? That's because those guys back in the day would take three months, six months off of of taking steroids, and then go on, like when they start a contest prep. Not all, but most of them. That's also why I never saw bitch tits on anybody. Herbert Metz was the first guy I ever saw bitch tits on. Herbert Metz. And then I saw him again on Franco Colombo in 1981. He had some fucking bitch tits in the Mr. Olympia. Okay? Herbert Metz and Franco Colombo both were the two guys. I mean, you didn't see bitch tits in the 70s. No matter what magazines you saw, you saw these guys who were all jacked and everything, but you never really saw bitch tits, right? I think there's a few reasons why. Oh, I, I, listen, again, the fact that they didn't do it all year long meant something. I, as far as I know, now listen, I wasn't on steroids back then, I I, and I truly didn't know what they were, okay? But... I don't think that they, of what I heard, I don't think that those guys took HCG, Clomid, and all those other things, okay? I think that, you know, I think that, I'm going to say shit that some guys might not agree with here, all right? So, let's, let's just talk. This is my theory. I could be totally fucking wrong, because in this house here, I'm never right, but I'm going to take a shot. It's my theory that they didn't do them long enough that it would really get the bad, bad, bad effects. In other words, you know, the heart, the, the kidneys, the, all this other shit. Um, I think that, I, I, I think that, uh, like, of, of what I know, I don't think that they took HCG. And I don't think that they took Clomid. They certainly didn't take fucking Novadex or, you know, because Novadex was the only fucking, you know, was the first real fucking... Uh, you know, estrogen block. I don't think they took that stuff. Now, I could be wrong, all right? You know, I didn't talk to them back then. And it really, I really, I know a lot of the guys, and I, I mean, you know, I, uh, uh, you know, I didn't know what steroids were until like 80, 81 or something like that. And then, uh, but before that, I didn't know, and I didn't talk to anybody like, what'd you do after a cycle? So I don't really know too much, but this is my theory. I think that they didn't go on it long enough. For them to get, I think their body was able to bounce back because they would do it for three, four, five, six months at the most, and then stop. I know Danny Padilla talks about that. I think Danny Padilla did it for four months out of a year. Okay, I don't think 
that their bo- I think their bodies were able to bounce back. I also don't think they did, you know, they did such massive dosages. All right, there is talk about Arnold when he was younger did up to 100 D balls a day. I don't know. That could all be rumored. That was I think in a Wendy Lee book. But we don't know. Okay. Um, I can talk to some of my boys from back then. I mean, I could ask Leon Brown, but I don't think that they they did things. I don't think that they knew the severity. Okay, I think that uh, when you go on, you know, I think that I I, I feel that um, they they thought of these things as like they knew that they were strong, so they they did get off them. That's why they didn't stay on them all year long. They did know that they were strong. They did know that it was tough on the liver, but so was fucking you know uh, antibiotics or anything else. But I don't think that they felt. It was healthy to stay on all year long. I remember Rich Gasparri actually was one of the first guys to ever say, dude, you never go off that shit. You never go off. You know what I mean? And, you know, back then, I always thought, you know, the same thing. When I first heard about steroids, I always heard that you cycle it. I heard it from the guys back in Gold's Gym, back in the day. I heard it all the time. And I think that that's why their bodies would bounce back a lot more because they would go off for so many months. And then, when, you know, when they were cleaned out and then, it, you know, they went back on, boom. The gains came back amazingly, okay? So I think that, you know, there's merit. I don't, and again, I never saw bitch tits back then. If you look at the old muscle and fitness, if you have any, or if you go online and look at all pictures of bodybuilders from the 70s, you'll never see guys with bad bitch tits. The, the only one I saw was that guy Herbert Metz, okay? He was the only one I saw with bitch tits at first. And, and then I get, again, I saw a few other little guys, but then Colombo. And 81 had him really bad in, in, on an Olympia stage. Yeah, one side was like fucking, like a tit. But, he's a fucking fucko anyway. But, uh, I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is, guys, listen. You know, to answer your question, Iron Man, you know, the reason, these guys say are going over and buff. Okay, back then, you know, they used steroids, you know, I mean, they really weren't, you know, they fucked around a little bit with thyroid, you know, they did, you know, um, <clears throat> there was also some natural thyroid preparation, which had the hormone in it, you know what I mean, like desiccated thyroid and all that stuff, they had that, it was around, but for the most part, these guys today take, you know, they take anti-cortisones, stuff like cytadrin and shit, you know, and then you cider mills, and then then you're fucking, you know, then you're, you know, you, you spiral actones for, the, you know, different things for the fucking, you know, for for water, for, you know, you got fucking, you know, you got, uh, 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 you know, all these peptides and IGFs and insulin, and then the steroids, and then SARMs, you know what I'm saying? You know, you have things that make you more insulin sensitive. Then you have things that, you know, uh, uh, uh. You, you know, like stuff like fucking clombuterol and, and different, you know, but you add all that into the mix, bro. You're taking 10 different fucking drugs and it can't be good for your liver. And it's certainly not good for your kidneys. There's a reason why all these guys are getting kidney problems. There's a reason for that. There's a, and, and heart. It's, there's a reason. It's not because, you know, the bodybuilder or the human being has evolved from the 1970s or 80s. It's because they're taking way, way more shit than ever, okay, that's the difference, gotta understand that, all right, I mean, in Arnold's day, they didn't, they, they used to cycle taking steroids, they did not go on all year long, and I think that that has merit, and could it help the bodybuilders of today, absolutely, but the problem is, these guys stay on for so long, I mean, to get, like, big Rammy and, 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 you know, these little fucking, like, gosh, come on here, you know, that shit, to get a look like that, or Morgan asked, you gotta be on all year long, you know, you're probably gonna get heart problems, and you're probably gonna get kidney problems down the road, you know, there's too many bodybuilders on dialysis, there's way too many, you know, there's too many bodybuilders that have died a heart attack, they'll die from the same fucking thing, you know, plus not for nothing, these fuckos today, a lot of them even use recreational drugs, they use drugs I never even fucking heard of, Okay? So what I'm trying to tell you is, if you're asking me about what kind of side effects, how come they're not, you ask me, how come they're not, uh, let's see, they're, ment- they're not mentally, emotionally uh, fucked up like the guys today. Well, there you go. And you said, um, you gave the list of heart problems. You said libido loss, uh, anxiety, 
and depression. Because uh, you said on the, you actually said in your, your, your thing that about you know guys get depressed when they go off steroids. I don't think that they were on it long enough that it fucked them up. Do you understand what I'm saying? He, you know, I know what some guys. You can be on for three weeks and you'll shut your body down after two weeks. I, I get you, fucking experts. Okay, I get it. I, you're right. You're absolutely fucking lutely right. But you have a chance to bounce back a lot better than if you've been on it for five years and then take off. Okay, you can bounce back. If you've been on it for three months, four months, you can bounce back a lot better. And look at Schwarzenegger in the movie Pumping Iron. A hundred days out, he was fucking clean. He walked in that gold gym looking like, just like a muscular guy at, at the most. That's it. He didn't look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. And three months later, he's on stage. Okay. I seen the same thing with Lou Ferrigno. Okay. Fucko. He, he, he fucking, when he did the movie Sinbad... I saw him in Gold Gym, he looked like a basketball player, bro. He looked like a basketball player. You know, he was skinny. He must have had about 17 inch arms. He was, you know, tall. He didn't have nothing. And then I saw him, that was like in April or something like that. And then I saw him again, I think in June, at the Night of Champions. He ripped off his shirt, had the beard, and he was on stage. And if everybody remembers, or you can Google the pictures of him at the Night of Champions, ripping off his fucking shit. And he was fucking like 275 ripped. I was like, wait a minute, I just saw him. The bullshit, bro. Bull fucking shit. I just saw him in the gym. It goes. Now I'm, out, I'm back in New York here. There you go. Okay. That's what happened. Because these guys would not go on all year long. Alright. They weren't going to. And they weren't taking massive amounts of insulin. Which can cause heart fucking problems. Massive amounts of. 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 of what are you. The fucking. Um, come on. Help me out of here. The, the fucking. Uh, clombuterol, okay, they weren't doing that, bro, those things alone, hey, you thyroid on top of that, bro, you're asking for a fucking, you're making a little cocktail there, a fucking fuck me up for life shit, you understand, you know, I'm friends with Phil Hernan, and every time, you know, I see him, you know, when he's posting shit and stuff, you know, and I see him on that kidney dialysis. It kills me. You know what I mean? I, I love Phil Hart. He's a fucking funny guy. He's a good guy. I like his, love his fucking, uh, I, lo I love his personality, you know. Um, but still, you know, he's, and he's got a beautiful daughter, a little girl, you know. And he said to himself, it's, it's, it's too ironic, dude. He's not the only one like that. So what I'm trying to say is, you see these guys, and you know what they used to look like and shit. And now you see... Even he looks fucking goddamn good for a guy on dialysis. But what I'm saying is, you can't, those guys today, these guys have, have, have gone way past. You know, I, you know, the whole fucking, I'd rather live, you know, you know, like, a, you know, 20 years as a lion than fucking 10 years as a lamb. Bullshit, bro. You say that shit when you're on a fucking, when you're on your deathbed and your family sitting there crying. <laughs> You know, and you took all those fucking steroids. That's what Mike meant. Mike uh, Matarazzo was it was even saying before he fucking you know before he died. Fuck, I should have never took those steroids. It, it it affects you, bro. Even though that was in his DNA, it affects you. Okay, too much affects you. What you got to do to compete in the Olympia? All you guys, you're willing to sell your soul to stand up there and be jacked for one day. You ever see what Mr. Olympia looks like during the off season? He's a blimp. You know what I mean? Because you got to let the body normalize. And he's still on shit. But, you know, when he's not dieting, I mean, it just we all just saw those pictures of Sean Roden. Holy fuck, you know what I mean? Oh, you know, it is balloon! You older guys know what that is. Remember that? In a fucking F troop to her cowies? It is balloon! Anyway. Alright, enough of the shit. So now you know. I, they didn't do steroids. All year long. I think that was a huge thing. And they didn't do the amounts. They didn't have a they didn't have a drug for every process. Now even if there's even things you could take to make yourself more hungry. I mean, it's it, you know, by the time you're done and you're taking fucking you know fifty different drugs for fifty different processes in the body, you you're asking for fucking Mount St. Helens to erupt one day inside you. And that's what's gonna happen. That's why the sport's fucked, bro. It's fucked. The future sport, eventually you're gonna have to do something about that. I don't know what. That's another that's another talk of smack for itself. Anyway. All right. Uh a few people have asked me about this. Uh over time I've gotten a million questions about this. There is a movie called The Ramblin' Freak. Now, 
a lot of you people, you young guys that just watch YouTube videos, you don't really know too much about the magazine shit. You know, for like 15 years, I wrote a column called The Ramblin' Freak from Muscular Development Magazine. And bro, it was the number one column. And yes, Dave, if you're watching this, Dave Palumbo, you know that my column was number one, bro. Your column was good, but bro, my column was the most read column in that fucking magazine. So, let's get that straight. No matter who wrote for that magazine, my column was column, you know, I was the, the hottest columns from that magazine. Now, and that comes from the boss, and they used to do, uh, you know, they used to do these little, like, fucking things, what do you call it, uh, polls and shit. My column used to be the, the, the top. Me and Dave. Dave was, Dave wrote good. John Romano's the best writer, though. You know, John Romano wrote the best articles. But my column was the column. The ass-kicking column. And you older guys, you that have been around, you know that. Ramblin' Freak. Now, why am I talking about this? Because there's a movie called The Ramblin' Freak. And uh, they show my picture and everything like that. It's a real movie in a movie theater. It was in a movie theater. And, you know, it was in, it was in like... Uh, all the film festivals and shit like that. Southwest. You know what I mean? It was in the Southwest. Film festival was huge. It's, you know, overseas, everywhere. Now, I even did some speeches there. Okay. But it's not about me. Isn't that crazy? Ramble Freak. But it's not about me. It, let me tell you about how that movie came to be. And I believe you can watch it online in some of the places. I don't know if it's on Netflix yet or any of that stuff. It was in the movie theaters... Not too long ago. I don't know if it made it to that stuff yet. But I know it, you can watch it some places online. I am in the movie. Yes. Uh, I play a role. But it's an ironic... Uh, it's, it's, it's a really twist. Even though it's about... Even though it's called a Ram and Freak. It's about a guy who was once a film guy. You know, he did... You know, he, used to, he was a student of film... And he went out and he started making his own films. And his, his sisters, he had two twin sisters who had this rare disease, okay, where, which, where their skin, you know, basically, you know, they become like a mummy. Their skin just falls off, breaks off, and just comes off them. So they got to get wrapped. And it's a very painful, they become like mummies. They're wrapped in fucking, you know, in bandages. <coughs> and these two little girls... They had some personality, man. They used to make YouTube videos, and they were fucking hysterical. They were funny. They were two young, young little girls. And, uh, you know, you, you knew what they were going through. They documented their stuff, you know, both good and bad. And um, I, I, I got to get the story right, but he might, this, the producer quit. Quit life, baby. He went out, and he lived in a van with his cat. Because he was very depressed, he couldn't sit around watching his his little sisters die. It was, you know, they were you know a lot younger than him, so he couldn't watch them die. He knew that they were going to die eventually because that disease takes you. You don't really live to be an adult when you have that disease. And uh, it, it, one of my friends, uh, uh, one of the kid I grew up with, his his son had it. Oh, uh, I'll get back to the you know. I'm waiting. I'm getting too far off the story. We'll, we'll we'll talk about that in a second. I'll tell you more about that story. So anyway. So these two little girls, he knew that they were going to die. He knew his sisters were going to die. So he went on his sabbatical, just basically fucking just lived out of a van, fucking homeless fucking guy, you know. Just threw away his film career. Threw away everything. Just resigned from life. And then one day he got, a, he got basically, you know, he gets the calls, one sister dies, and then another sister dies. And, uh, he had watched, I think they did a thing on TLC about them. And he watched on TLC. And after the TLC show, or before the TLC show, it was my show. Now, I never remember. i got to get it right. If you watch the movie, it was either before his show, like they showed the man whose arms exploded, Greg Valentino. And then they showed this, the little girls, you know, it was the next show. Or it was the little girls first, and then it, whatever. It doesn't matter the order. But what matters was our shows were back to back. So TLC did this thing on him, and he watched it one day, and they were they were dead, they both had passed away, and and it, he 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 was devastated, you know, he, he just, he, and it was almost like divine intervention. One day he he just got, 
you know, after being emotionally fucked up over this. So he went on eBay and he bought himself a professional camera. Okay? So he can start making this film. A camera that he was like familiar with from back in his days. It wasn't a real modern one, but it was a good one. And he uh he gets the camera in the mail and he notices that there's film in the camera still. Okay? So he pops it out and he looks at it and he realizes that this film is me. Greg Valentino. Wait a minute. This is the fucking guy that was in the TLC show after my sisters. And it's called The Ramblin' Freak. Now, Steve Blackman had wanted me to do this show called The Ramblin' Freak Reality Show. So we started to film it. And I filmed it with my friend Gary, who actually went to jail. Okay, he bought this camera, started filming, and then he got in trouble and he went to jail. He's my boy. So what happened was the camera just sat dormant. It only had like 20 hours on it. But all the 20 hours of film was me. Okay, doing crazy fucking Ramblin' Freak shit. So, he gets out of jail and he tells my girlfriend, dude, you know, he tells my girlfriend, listen to me, sell my fucking camera, I need money, just sell that fucking camera, because we were holding the camera from, sell the camera and uh, get me money. So my girlfriend, instead of checking the fucking camera and taking all the film out of there, she just takes the camera, puts it on eBay, and sells it. She sells it to this producer, his name is Parker, Parker Smith. So she sells it to Parker Smith. So Parker Smith gets the camera, sees me in the sees me in the film, and he says, "Holy shit!" And he starts to watch it, and he realizes it's me, the guy, you know, after the TLC show. And he says to me, "This is an omen. This is a fucking omen. How ironic is it that I buy a camera off the internet out of the blue to fucking film in a camera? I used to watch my sisters." Uh, on TLC all the time, and every time her show would end, it was followed up by this show about some guy who had the biggest arms in the world, or, or vice versa. Or my show would be first, and then her show, then a the girl's show. How ironic is that? How fuck it? So he said, this is a fucking omen. This is an omen. This is my sisters talking to me from heaven, basically, wanting me to do this film. You know, and basically I'm going to do it about my journey and them. The craziest thing is, at first, he didn't know which uh, what he was going to do. He just knew, I gotta do a film, I don't know what. He was thinking about just filming himself going on the road with his cat, and like filming different places and different things, and just, you know, being out on the road. He had no idea. It wasn't until he saw the video, my video in the camera, and said, oh my god, my sisters are sending me a message, and I'm going to do a video about them and my life, you know, how he, you know, the whole thing. That's what Stim, it was my opening and seeing my video, okay, the Ramblin' Freak video. It was that, that he felt that was a sign from his sisters to do something about his sisters and everything else. So, otherwise, if he didn't get that video and just bought a camera from somebody else, he would have just videotaped himself, maybe just doing stupid shit on the road. And might never have been where he is today. So what he did was, he took old footage, he took footage of me, and he came to visit me. He asked me. He actually, uh, he, he was smart. He was afraid that I was going to say no. Okay? So what he did was, um, the only way to contact me is he went on my, my, uh, my website. And on there, it has a thing to do personal training. So he clicked on it and he wanted a personal consultation, a phone consultation from me. When I get the phone call from him, he calls me up and he says, Greg, listen to me. I'm not going to lie to you. This is not about wor working out. I don't work out. He goes, I have nothing to do with weightlifting. He goes, but I, I paid for this consultation for one reason. I'm the guy that bought your camera, the camera that your, your girlfriend sold me. And he just said, in there is some fucking extra footage of you. And uh, I, my two sisters died. And they used to be on this TLC show, okay? And every time I'd watch them, your show would come up. And he said, I felt like it was an omen. And I want to do a movie, you know, in their honor. And I want you to be in it. Because this, it, you, seeing you in this film has inspired me and made me believe that this was meant to be. 
And I said, absolutely, bro. Let's do this. And he was really happy. And he came to my house. And we did some filming in the house. We did some filming in a, my girl's gym, Danny Capabianco. Okay, we, we filmed a little bit in her gym. We did a lot. And then he put together this awesome, awesome, awesome documentary film that, you know, if there's a fucking message there, and if you watch the film, it's it's not it's not bodybuilding. So don't if you if any of you guys are interested in watching it, don't watch it because you think you're going to see bodybuilding. It has nothing to do with bodybuilding. Just because I'm in it means it has nothing to do with bodybuilding. It has to do with these two little girls and how the video that he got from me and coming to visit me and the whole thing inspired him to do this video and dude this 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 video has won awards it has kicked ass it's it's premiered in New York City I was at the premiere I did I did a a whole speech to the audience it's it's you know and no we're going back a year or two ago okay this is not something recent and we filmed it about four years ago okay so it's not something that's filmed recently it's about four years ago but, you know, it takes time with films, and, and, and now this film is, is kicking ass. And, it, you know, I just, you know, I've gotten a lot of people asking me about it. I put things up on my Instagram about it, you know what I mean, in the past when it was, you know, when it was going for the, you know, Southwest by Southwest, whatever the fuck it is, and all those places. And even here in New York City, you know, Tribeca, all, those, all over the place. This fucking film is about the two little girls, not about me. What happened was, how ironic is it that this guy quit life, sitting in a van, watches the videos of his little sisters sitting there crying, watching, because now they're dead, because he couldn't watch them die. And he sees these two little girls, and then this fucking muscle head comes on, neck, and now the man would explain, you know, and he start, you know, maybe just out of curiosity, starts watching it. And he, wa every t and, and he watched his sister's show a few times, and every time he'd watch it, my show would pop up. And then he buys a video camera off of eBay, of all places. He could have bought that video camera anywhere. He could have, he could have went any place to buy. He could have went to a local store. And it wasn't even a modern video that had like, you know, it, it used tape still. Okay, but it was a, you know, it was a professional video. But now today, they use, you know, I don't even, I don't, maybe super duper cameras use tapes, I don't know. But they use, you know, a uh, 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 digital. It was not a digital camera. Okay, so he went and he bought this fucking goddamn, this, this, this camera. And he sees the guy that's on the same fucking network with his sisters. The same network. Okay, what are the chances of that? What? So he felt like, dude, this is an omen. And the fact that he came to meet me and that I was so good with him, we, we, the way we gelled and the way we made this film go on and everything. And then, now here's the part to my story. My friend, okay, had a son that had the same fucking problem. His name is E.J. Carfee. I think it's on the internet. You can look it up. He had the same problem, okay, these little girls. And he asked, you know, he, saw, he knows that I'm friends with Triple H. So he asked if I could hook him up with Triple H, all right? I didn't have the, I, I lost his number. I called Dave Palumbo. He got, me the, he, he got me the number. We talked. Triple H said, let's do it. Triple H told him, listen to me. The kid was going through this big operation, which most people don't survive, okay? Most kids don't survive. He, his chance of survival was small. But... We got Triple H to call him on the phone first. And Triple H said to him, listen to me. Get through this operation and I'm bringing you to WrestleMania. You get through this operation. Promise me. And a kid told him, I promise you, I promise you, I, I, I'm going to live. I'm going to And he did. And so Triple H took him to WrestleMania. True story. He took him to WrestleMania. He took him backstage. He met Batista, The Rock. They all gave him something. But... His favorite wrestler of all time is Triple H. And Triple H gave him a whole bunch of stuff and then gave him a jersey. And he signed the jersey. Okay? And the kid was so ecstatic. It made his life. He thanked Triple H. I thanked Triple H. I told him, dude, thank you. Thank you so much. And Triple H's real name is Paul. It's not, not Hunter S. Thumsley. So when he, uh, 
He went back to school and he showed all the kids. He was a pride and beaming all pictures of him and Triple H. And it was like it made his life. It made it 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 touched him so much. And the father, uh, you know, was crying and stuff and telling me thank you and everything. Six months later, the kid's on his deathbed. He knows he's going to die. He's dying. And he's not going to make it. There's, there's no operation. There's, he's dying. He says to his father, Dad, please, thank Triple H again for me. I, 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 it meant so much to me, Dad, I, that I want to be buried in his jersey. Let him know that that's how much that meant to me. So they buried him in the jersey. He died, he bur and they buried him in the jersey that Triple H signed for him. How's that? Huh? How's that? How's that for a hero? Oh, I think I even told, I told the story in a movie. And uh, the little girls had the same thing. These two little girls had the same thing. And they died. And I believe that they somehow inspired their brother because now he's making all kinds of movies and he's back in the film industry. And if it wasn't for them dying and inspiring him and then he f gets this fucking camera with my video in it. My girlfriend by accident left the video in there. Now his life has changed. And he's a Hollywood guy now. That's the rambling freak. And I'll leave it with I'll leave you guys with that. All right, so there you have it. That's it for this week, okay? So what did we learn? We learned that back in the old days, the reason why a lot of guys probably didn't have side effects was because they didn't do steroids all year round. They cycled their steroids. They went on cycles, 10 weeks, you know, three months, four months. I didn't even know if they did six months, but some might have done six months. I know that Danny Padilla used to say he did three to four months before a show. I know that Arnold would do three or four months before a show. If you saw Arnold in the offseason, he was not as big. He wasn't the Arnold that you saw. Just like in Pumping Iron. When you saw him walk in Pumping Iron, and they had, you know, he walked in Gold's Gym, and you saw it said 101 days till the Olympia, and he said, you know, I want to sign up, get some muscles and everything. And you saw what he looked like. He was small. Okay? Why? Because they didn't do steroids all year long. And the first time I saw a bitch tits, Herbert Metz. Okay? Now, we learned that. So I think that, you know, and today they, 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 they take a, a drug for every, and a massive amounts. I mean, these guys aren't taking like, you know, I'm, di I'm diabetic. My father was diabetic, insulin dependent. You know, they take two to four IUs. So fucking these guys are taking 50 fucking IUs. Hey, come on. Forget it. All right? Let them fucking do it. Because when they all go off, Pee Wee Herman. Anyway. So we got that. And then what else did we learn? We learned that sometimes God works in mysterious ways. Now, nah, maybe you may don't, don't believe in God or maybe you're called God something else, whatever. But the Ramblin' Freak, that, that movie, The Ramblin' Freak, is a journey. It's about this documentary about this guy's life who lived out of a van. And he, you know, when, his, when, when the little girls, his sisters, who had this rare disease, when they died... He didn't know what to make. He wanted to get back. He, it inspired him to start making films again. But, but he didn't know what, it, what film he was going to make. He just knew, I have to get a camera. And I'm going to do it. Whatever it is, I'm going to do it in honor of them. And their show on TLC was after my show. Or before my show. And he, you know, it insp and he gets a camera out of all places. He gets my fucking girlfriend, leaves the tape in there. And there you go. Okay? That was the gist of this. So, I hope all you guys... Realize that life, guys, we don't get do-overs. We don't get do-overs. You spend the rest of your life like this guy. Thank God he got out of the van and got back into life, bro. Okay? 
He could have just lost himself and just been one of these hippies. He had long hair, beard, okay, living with a cat. I saw the van, it was fucking full of shit and stuff like that inside there. You know, living on fucking, you know, McDonald's and, and garbage, you know. And now he's a fucking Hollywood producer. It just goes to show you, if you, you know, the day you give up, you know, you don't get second chances, guys. You don't get second chances. One day, if you live to be 80 years old, you're going to sit there and you're going to say, what the fuck did I do? I wasted all my life. I let my life go. You can't throw away a life. You just, you can't do it. You can't do it. You only get one shot, bro. I don't care what you've been through. All right? This guy watched his two little sisters die. He ran away. He couldn't take it. He resigned from life. I don't care what you've been to. It doesn't matter. What matters is there's only the here and the now. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow, nobody knows what's going to happen. A fucking comet could come down and fucking blow up this whole earth. We're all fucked. We're dead. So there's the here and the now. Start getting busy again. Start living your life. Get your shit together. Okay, stop fucking sitting there and feeling sorry for yourself and sitting in a in a pool of pity me. Because you're not doing anything but punishing yourself. It's nobody else's fault, your fault. Okay, I'm just telling you, you got to get up and go forward. You got to stop fucking around. You got to stop fucking around. I don't care. I don't care how hurt you are. It doesn't matter. A parent dies. Both my parents are dead. Okay, girlfriend dies. Well, my girlfriend... I held a dead body, okay? I've seen people killed in front of me. But you still got your life. What you do with your life is up to you, okay? Get your head straight. You win your battles up here first. Get this right. I believe in you guys. We'll talk more about this kind of stuff. But I believe in you guys. You need to believe in you, okay? Don't quit. Don't get in a van with a cat and just drive around somewhere, okay? Like this guy did. This guy caught himself. Imagine if he would have lived to be an 80 and never would have done this. Maybe lived to, you know, be 100. Sitting there as an old man one day in his rocking chair saying, maybe if I would have made a movie, maybe I could have been somebody, maybe I could have done something. Instead, I just sat there and I pissed and shit and farted in a bathtub and I laid in it. I, pl I laid in my pity, fucking my pity tub. Imagine if he would have done that. Imagine if he would have resigned from life like a lot of you guys want to do. You want to quit. Huh? Imagine if he would have done that. He caught himself. Catch yourself. Get your shit together. Stop fucking around. Alright? We're going to talk more about this. I got a fucking... The cold going on. Listen. Be good to your girl. Be good to your wife. Be good to your significant other. Be good to your kids. Pay your child support. But most of all, be excellent to you. Be good to yourself. Stop fucking beating yourself up. Alright? Stop hitting yourself in the head with a hammer. Because all you're doing is giving yourself a fucking sore head. And the situation's not going to change. Get up. Get up out of that fucking pity tub. And get your shit together. I got your back. Ram a freak, baby. No fucking around. Titan Medical Center, we are here to make you feel better, look better, and perform better. We're here to get you to your optimal levels in the most natural way possible. We are a boutique style clinic without the boutique style costs. All medications are monitored and prescribed by a physician. Let us help you get the results you've been wanting. 
come to Titan Medical Center for the most cutting edge therapies and the most current information on how to take the most natural approach to your health.